and ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Good morning and welcome to the September 1st, 2015 meeting. I'd remind you to silence your cell phone. The meeting documents are on the end of the counter next to Commissioner Bender in the white folder. And Robert is in the front row. He would have listening devices if you need them. With that, we'll move on to routine business. Item number one is consider a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Right. And a second? Second. Any additions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is approve approval of the county commission minutes for the and the joint Minnehaha County City of Del Rapids minutes. I read that wrong. We're going to start again. Approval of the county commission minutes, joint Minnehaha County City of Del Rapids minutes and the joint Minnehaha County City of Sioux Falls minutes from 8-25-2015. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Is there any corrections? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is bills to the PB paid in the amount of $1,188,423.97. Pay the motion. bills. Second. And comments. Commissioner Berth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, this week's bills are much higher than we normally have, and uh, there are a few fairly large uh, items included. You know, uh, our budget is uh, $72 million, and that compares to Pennington's uh, budget for 2015 of $86 million. But this week's bills include uh, Armor Correctional Health, which is the jail. We have six bills totaling 327438 we have 11 bills for concrete materials for asphalt, totaling 174,733. Then we have another bill for asphalt surfacing company of 273,589, and Fram construction 101,429. And additionally, we had two funerals at uh, $4,500. Thank you for your comments, Jeff. Are there any other comments on bills? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four is reports. There are none. Item number five is personnel action. Item A, consider a motion to approve the routine personnel action. Is there a motion? So okay. moved. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Any questions for Carrie? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number B is recognize significant employee anniversaries for September 2015. Good morning, Carrie Deaver from Human Resources. I'm pleased to let you know that we have five individuals celebrating major anniversaries this month. We have Troy Waterman at the JDC celebrating 15 years of service. Barb Larson at the Sheriff's Office celebrating 20. Steve Masajewski at the Sheriff's Office also celebrating 20. John Cole as an appraiser celebrating 25 years of service. And we also have Doug Huffer from the highway celebrating 15. And I think Doug is also here this morning. Any words? Oh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Wonderful. Am I missing anybody else? I don't think so. But our thanks go out to all those employees, of course. Thank you. Um, item number C is recognize volunteers in the county departments for 2015. August was another big month, 243 volunteers in nine areas of county. Can't do it without them, so our thanks goes, go to them as well. Thanks, Carrie. Thank and I'm just going to throw in here while Carrie's standing up here that our Human um, Resources Department and staff is an integral part of all of our departments in Minnehaha County. This is... Um, is recognition of human services week or should I say day I'm not sure which it is um, and we who works in the office is um, Jen Adkins Tiffany Willard Maggie Gray and Julie Disberg and of course Carrie um, under the direction of Carrie and they bring respect and fairness and professionalism to the county and they they um, put that out there for the rest of them to mirror what they do and we thank you for what you do thank you, thank you. pleasure to be here as yeah. well thank you Item number C is application for abatement. There are none. Item number seven is notices and requests. Item A is to authorize the county auditor to publish requests for proposal on all for on-call blood draw services in Minnehaha County Jail. 
Kirsten. Right. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, before you this morning is a request from the state's attorney's office for your permission uh, to solicit proposals for on-call blood draw services uh, provided at the Minnehaha County Jail. Uh, a few uh, changes uh, recently prompt this uh, request. Uh, before 2013, uh, the jail was able to provide those uh, services to all the local agencies, pretty much at minimal or no cost by having uh, jail medical staff perform uh, blood draws under the current uh, status of the law at the time because of a U.S. Supreme Court case that came down in 2013 as well as uh, some shift in jail medical policies. Uh, jail medical is no longer able to do that at minimal or no expense. So uh, we are left with having to utilize an outside on-call blood draw service to perform uh, blood draws that are uh, prompted by uh, people who are not giving up their blood consensually, essentially. So uh, at first we thought this uh, expense would be fairly minimal because it was a small universe of blood draws that uh, are non-consensual and, and prompted by a warrant and actually involve active resistance. Uh, what's happened is, for whatever reason, because of these changes, uh, we've gone from expenses of about I think it was $2,400 in 2013 to expense of about $24,000 in 2014. And uh, I believe already this year we've expended over $20,000 uh, in 2015 because of those escalating costs. Um, we believe it's prudent that uh, they'll exceed uh, $25,000 in the aggregate for one year. So we're going to request uh, proposals from the community to have these competitively bid out, so to speak. So I'm asking for your permission with that uh, attached blood uh, draw solicitation to be able to publish it and, and seek those uh, responses. Thank you. Are there any questions for Kirsten on this? I think just another example of where costs come from just out of the blue for us, unexpected, and we have to figure out how to deal with them. And I think we'll just dig further into this. I, I'm going to need a motion to approve, but we need to dig further into this and see if there's other solutions to this problem. So um, is there a motion? There is. Second. I have a motion and a second to authorize the county auditor to publish requests for proposal of on-call blood draw services. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number eight is planning and zoning notices. There are none. Item number nine is petition of compromise of lien. Jeff Barth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, this week we have a application for compromise uh, in the amount of $2,992.53. Uh, it's DPNO 61124. The applicant is asking for a compromise and release in full with no payment. All county assistance was provided for poor relief in 2006 and 2007. In 2007, the applicant made three partial payments totaling $150. Uh, as we know, uh, when we do give assistance to indigent folks, uh, we actually do place a lien on them and uh, hope at some day to either have them repay us or collect. Um, CCOG contacted us uh, about this applicant who is attempting to purchase one of the governor's houses on Waltz Avenue in Sioux Falls that was donated for redevelopment. Uh, Minnehaha County provided that land through a donation of a tax deed property. Through the home buying process, this lien was discovered and must be resolved. The applicant has completed all other steps required to assume ownership, but closing on this is scheduled for yesterday. CCOG is aware the Commission cannot act on, cannot act on this application until today. Uh, the applicant gets an, a monthly retirement income of $1,067. She showed her uh, 2014 tax return that listed an adjusted gross income of $2,593. She has assets of about $600 in the bank, a 2002 Ford Explorer, and collectibles worth $178. Has no debts, but pays currently $760 a month in rent. So again, uh, we have an applicant who, it, it's certainly not as uh, Commissioner Kelly worries about something with the public defender or public advocate. This was uh, 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 relief for uh, uh, because of poverty. And uh, although they still owe us a considerable amount here, $2,992.53, they did make an attempt to pay off some back uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, I really, 
although we're not going to dun anybody and although there's no interest on this, uh, we do have the opportunity to help this person uh, move into a home that they would then own. And so I'll make a motion to, uh, uh, to accept her offer of uh, no payment and uh, hope I get a second. I have a motion to compromise DPNO 61-124. Is there a second? I'll second that. A motion is second. Is there any comments? Well, I should say, is the applicant here? The applicant is not here. Okay, so comments. Commissioner Benica. Well, I will just say that she's got significant uh, medical issues, and there's probably no way that she's ever going to be able to go back to work, even if uh, she wanted to. And frankly, if putting her into this program will get... Uh, her back on or get this property back on the tax rolls which will benefit us more than continuing trying to collect this lien from her any additional comments okay i have robert commissioners i would just uh, uh add one note and i i did update the memo and i i don't know why it didn't load into dropbox i i but i spoke to lynn keller forbes at the end of the day on friday and that that uh closing has been uh, postponed until there's a resolution of this lien. So I, I just didn't want to leave that hanging out there. That's that, that's on hold pending this uh, this action. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of compromising the lien in full, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone who would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda today, and seeing none, we will move on. On to regular business. 9 a.m. is a public hearing to receive comments or input on the 2016 Minnehaha County Annual Budget. Carol Muller. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Carol Muller, Commission Administration Officer. Yes, on July 28th, you approved the provisional budget. Today is the hearing on that provisional budget. And we are also providing you with additional uh, options, if you would choose to, for, for adjustments that you may choose to make. The provisional budget stands at $79,777,112. And this is an opportunity for the public to comment on the budget. If you would like at this time, I'd be more than happy to go through some of those adjustments that um, have been presented to you, if you'd like me to go through and do that. If you just start at the top of that sheet that you have, I'll work our way down. The first one is that the Air Guard is proposing to fund an additional FTE, so you see that there is associated revenue and expense money for that, uh, revenue of $65,000 with expenses of $50,000. The next line item is that the forfeitures within the courts have been trending up, and it is proposed to increase this to ninety thousand, increase this an additional $90,000. The catastrophic medical pool has dwindled the past few years, and we are proposing to decrease this $40,000, which would bring us to zero for reimbursement. And to date, Minnehaha County has not submitted anything to catastrophic fund. There may be one on the horizon possibly coming along, but at this point, uh, we're budgeting nothing for reimbursement for next year. We're not anticipating that we may have anything this year, and last year we had expenses of seven thousand dollars on catastrophic and rev we had expenses of twenty two thousand dollars and revenue of seven thousand uh, dollars we increased the jdc contract by thank you we increased the jdc contract housing by thirty five thousand dollars and that came from jamie gravitt recognizing uh, as he looked through the budget and updated that a little bit there are new dollars from the state for juvenile diversion is coordinated by the state's attorney's office and we've put in fifty thousand dollars for that at the end of august we receive an update on the centrally assessed utilities and this would be increased by two thousand eight hundred and sixty five dollars there is a correction on the split between the general fund and building fund for twenty six thousand one hundred and twenty dollars this amount was removed from the building fund and added to the general fund and then anticipated invested interest from debt service would be seventy thousand any questions at all at this point on the revenue, the adjustments? 
Go on, Carol. Thank okay, you. thank you. Expenditures. Human Services is proposing to decrease hospital bills by $100,000, with $50,000 being redirected to housing and rents. That would be a net gain of $50,000 for the budget. We have a contract with VOA for two non-secure shelter beds for juveniles that we are proposing to eliminate. We have always have three beds as part of the original contract in exchange for the building that we have provided to them. Last year, or a little bit before that time, we put in place an additional two beds. The way the diversion is going and the way uh, JDAI is working, we're not using those two additional beds, so we're proposing dropping those for next year. We would restore $65,000 in cuts to mental illness. The pictometry contract requires an additional $12,000 next year, and that would be in planning and zoning. The jail has done some rearranging of staff between sergeants and corporals for a savings of $45,000. Uh, SANE kits, which are the sexual assault kits, are being moved to human services for repricing and payment, including uh, which is reducing the state's attorney's line item by $50,000. Personnel actions to date, or through 825, have reduced expenses by $27,787, and we will make final adjustments coming into next Tuesday. So we have just a few more days that we will continue to adjust that. Last week, you approved redoing the audiovisual equipment in this room, moved that into this year because we can't wait any longer. And uh, that means that we can put 45,000, there's $45,000 less in expenses for the building fund for 2016. The fire fund tax districts would have an additional, it would be an additional expense of 9,414. And we have also had commissioners who have requested the budget be looked at for additional support for forward Sioux Falls and Makita. So those are the adjustments that you guys have had all on one page. Appreciation to the auditor's office and the department heads for going through one more time and continuing to update this as we move forward. To summarize all those changes, if you were to adopt all these changes, you would have a general cash fund applied of $3.9 million, $3 million and would have an opt-out of $1.5 million. In June and July, you expressed a willingness to look at a cash applied number of up to $4 million, so we are staying below that. We have also decreased the cash, the opt-out from the 1.7 at, uh, at the provisional budget down to 1.5. So within that, you can balance those numbers a little bit, and I know that the auditor's office would appreciate some direction as to how much for that opt-out and how much for the, um, for the cash applied. Any questions for Carol at this point? Okay, I'm just writing notes, sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, discussion on, um, I think we should talk about Forward Sioux Falls funding. We have left this one open. We have in the past given them $500 a year over five years. Um, I would like to encourage us to at least bump that just a little bit. Any thoughts, comments? I, I agree with you. Um, I think that what they're bringing into the tax base, whether it's in Sioux Falls or whether it's out in the county, is significant. And uh, uh, we do we do fund Makita, but it, but we don't do much for Forward Sioux Falls. And um, I think I think that would be a good investment. And I think they're in the middle right now, or they're. I don't think 2021 program or whatever it is right. working working on that um, the other thing is is when I talked to um, some people involved with it they did say that if we decide to give X number of dollars this year and our budget honestly can't handle it next year that we could back off on the amount that we had given from year to year so 2016 if we gave Would you something we could still 2000 change 2000 or what um, I don't have any proposal but is that a motion this would be I'll a make a motion for 2000 You can make a motion to put $2,000 in the budget for Forward Sioux Falls, and this would be for 2016 Correct. year. Are there any, is there a second or a comment? I'll second that. I have a second, <clears throat> motion and a second for um, $2,000 for Forward Sioux Falls. Are there any comments on that? Commissioner Benega? I think it's important that uh, all forms of government along with the business community are part of that process so that prospective clients who may come to this area look at uh, cooperation and consolidation if you will and supporting any new development and frankly property taxes are the only significant revenue source we have so increasing that economic development uh, 
process is a good thing for all of us. Okay. We have a motion and a second for increasing Forward Sioux Falls for 2016 to $2,000. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Then let's go on to Makita. Um, comments on Makita's? Madam Chair, um, I am liaison to Makita, and I suggested that to staff. Uh, we've gone several years without increasing our contribution, even though the other communities in the county have. And so I've suggested uh, making our total contribution to Makita be $5,500 instead of $5,000. Comments? I'll second that. Okay. I have a motion from Jeff to increase Makita to $5,500, seconded by... Commissioner Benega. Any other comments on that? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Um, this is a public hearing, and maybe we should move on to that part of it. Is there anyone who wants to speak in favor of the budget at this point? Anybody wants to speak in favor? Is there anyone who wants to speak against or raise issues against the budget we've put together? Well, that's nice, because we've spent a lot of time on it. Um, okay, then let's go on to the opt-out and the cash applied amount. At this point, Carol says we have an opt-out of one. We are using 1.5 of the opt-out that we voted on. I believe we voted on $3 million in July. 3.5. 3.5 in July. At this point, we're only using $1.5 million of that opt-out money, and we have, um, where was the cash applied? Uh, $4 million in cash applied <laughs> funds. Commissioner Barth. Well, I guess, Madam Chair, I'd like to ask uh, the auditor staff if they have a recommended number. Certainly, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we're not having to take the full amount of our opt-out at 3.5, but I, I don't think we should uh, uh, cut ourselves too too close either. So I'm, I'm wondering what their thoughts are. Okay. I see Kim Adamson coming to the microphone. Good morning, Commissioners. Kim Adamson from the Auditor's Office. Um, what this schedule that you're um, reviewing right now was meant to demonstrate is just that we did have room to bring the opt-out level down by $262,000 and still keep our cash applied level below that $4 million number. Um, we don't anticipate that the only really, the only open items left um, to consider before we finalize would be any personnel actions over for that would be approved next week. We don't anticipate that's going to change the number significantly at all. Um, we do want to uh, adopt an opt-out figure that's a, a round number, obviously, and so our recommendation was the 1.5 million. Any questions for Kim? Any additional questions or comments on the budget? Madam Chair, I suggest we go with the auditor's recommendation at $1.5 million. Okay. I'll second that. I have a motion and a second to go with the auditor's recommendation of $1.5 million opt-out. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Going to make a comment, and that is as we continue to move forward, we still have a few things in our budget next year, the year after, that if we do not receive any revenue stream from um, this from the state or some changes in how things are run, we will continue to cut probably outside agencies and non-essential items. And I don't want to say non-essential because they're all essential. We've already cut out anything we thought we could cut out, but there are agencies out there that we are not mandated to fund, and we will be moving forward at some date, if nothing changes, with cutting some of those. and. Um, pushing them forward to do some of their own work instead of de depending on the county. Carol, did you have a comment? Commissioners, I would just ask for some direction. Do you want to do a public hearing next week again? Are you anticipating any number changes? Just as you look ahead, you have next week's meeting. The following week, we do not meet because of the state conference uh, for commissioners and elected officials in Pierre. And the following week, you will be adopting on September 22nd, which is a week earlier than uh, we didn't know if we do the 22nd or the 29th. So just wanting to get a little bit of direction from you because we have one meeting before left before we adopt. Okay. I don't have anything additional to add to the budget after today. Any other 
Anybody want to revisit this budget next week? No. No. <laughs> no I won't either. Even eager. <laughs> I don't either. I don't either. Uh, I think I think we've worked long and hard on this. I think we uh, we really struggled with a lot of things, and and I, I think we've come out with the best plan we can. Uh, I'm I'm very pleased that we're only using 1.5 of the opt out. Uh, I think that was kind of our. Uh, what we intended initially when we put the opt-out, but you have to have enough flexibility there to to meet future costs. So I I think we're pretty much ought to leave it alone, and, except for the personnel requirements or personnel requests that come in. So. Okay. Additional comments. Madam Chair. Commissioner Barth. I, I just want to say thank you to my fellow commissioners because uh, uh, when I started nine years ago on this, uh, our budget process does not res did not resemble what we do today. We didn't look at anything line by line. In fact, uh, one of my fellow commissioners said, well, I trust our department heads. And I said, trust but verify. And they said I should change political parties. <laughs> but uh, the, the fact is that we really put our nose to the grindstone on this. And, uh, you know, Commissioner Bender, you might, uh, were you surprised at uh, how hard it was on the budget? Uh, because it really, it, it's changed changed over these last many years and ever since uh, things hit the fan in like 2009 we've really worked hard on it I would agree that it was a lot of hard work um, without a lot of um, easily apparent answers and um, an opt-out is not necessarily what anybody here wants to do but I, I think that we did what we had to do in order to um, meet the basic services that were mandated to provide and I would say again that if there are not some changes come forth by the state in the next year or so we are going to continue to raise property taxes which raises people in Minnehaha County's taxes there's a better way to do this and people need to be brave enough to move forward and figure out how to fund counties we are not the only county that has significant problems there are different problems in different counties but they all revolve around the lack of funding for counties and they need to look at this differently things have changed in the last 75 years significantly so we would need a motion. Do we have to have a motion or was this just a hearing? We don't need any motion. To accept the changes? No. We, we did each change individually, so we do not need a motion okay. for that. And we have direction for finishing this up and presenting it to you on the 22nd. Okay. Thank you. That's what we're going to do. Item number 11 is discussion and review of the City of Sioux Falls Minnehaha County partnership efforts. Mayor Mike Huther. And welcome to our house. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Chairperson Heiberger. Really appreciate the opportunity, and the fellow commissioners. I want to thank you as as well. Um, just give you some quick background. To give you some background uh, there was a while back I had, I had asked uh, my team to put together a uh, list of all the ways that the city and Minnehaha County partner and uh, so they started that and and all of a sudden they're going what well, we didn't know that and or we didn't know that and then we went back and did it again and learned more and more and more of all the ways that the the two entities we team up in the spirit of partnership uh, my intent today is to just kind of give us a, a brief run through of the various ways that we do partner. Uh, and I'm also going to have Heather uh, present to you a document which goes into much more detail all of the different ways that uh, our two teams partner. Um, Commissioner Bender, I think that you know, you'll find it uh, very, very eye-opening, uh, just just like we did. And, and I think that you'll find, even though Commissioner Barth has been on this uh, this journey for nine years, uh, I think he's going to also learn some things today. Uh, my presentation isn't intended to be a scorecard in, in any way, and who pays what is is also not uh, the intended message. Uh, really, it's to talk about all the different ways that, that we do partner. I also want to introduce you to Jeff Schmidt. 
Uh, Jeff is here today, and he also is a liaison with Minnehaha County uh, and the city to, to try to, again, try to identify the other ways that uh, maybe we can partner in, in the future. Uh, truly, let, let's celebrate what we accomplished together. I'm going to break this up into, into three different ways, facilities, programming, and, and land use, and, and zoning. And again, this is not a comprehensive list. I'm not going to discuss every single way that we do partner because we'd be here for a long, long time. It's really just a, a big picture review. Let's start with facilities. I, probably the, the one that everybody's aware of is the Law Enforcement Center, opened in 2003, city-owned but actually constructed on land provided by the county. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the, the way that we collaborate, whether it be the, the Emergency Operations Center, training space, indoor firing range, meeting rooms, so much goes on at our Law Enforcement Center. Uh, also, we've got these, uh, these things that we do together, whether it be you know, the Drug Task Force, uh, Fugitive and Violent Offender Task Force, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, SWAT teams and Bomb Squad. Uh, if, if, if we need our SWAT team uh, uh, someplace outside of the city and somewhere in this county, they're there working together. Another important one, the Siouxland Health and Human Services Building, again, opened up in 2007, provides a single point of access for patients and clients, uh, which is really just uh, phenomenal, especially in, in this time of, uh, of uh, unending health needs. But that facility houses Falls Community Health, the City Health Department, County Human Services, as, and, and as well as the Multicultural Center. Other facility partnerships. Siouxland Libraries. Again, uh, we work together in collaboration to provide uh, libraries, not only in just the, the city, but also in uh, outside of the city. Baltic, Brandon, Colton, Crooks, Gerritsen, Hartford, Humboldt, Valley Springs, and then yes, we also have a traveling bookmobile that goes throughout our city and throughout our county. Uh, and yes, a, a digital branch that's open 24 by 7 uh, that anybody can certainly utilize. Siouxland Heritage Museum. The county administers, thank you, thanks, sir. Uh, the county administers, and this, this is a, joint, a jointly funded um, um, a work. Uh, we've got the old Courthouse Museum, Pettigrew Museum, and again, uh, a partnership uh, in, in, in a grand, grand way. The Sanitary Landfill. Uh, we work with 32 different cities and five counties with our, with our landfill. Uh, certainly Minnehaha County being, uh, being one of the, the, the largest. The fairgrounds. Uh, the county owns and operates the, the fairgrounds, of course. Uh, and the city is blessed to utilize these, uh, these fairgrounds for you know, police training. Uh, you're kind enough to let us put our, our leaf and, and tree drop off there in, in the fall or, or during an ice storm. Uh, as well as, uh, you're also kind enough to let us uh, pile our snow there at, uh, at times. Uh, and then certainly we, we try to do our part to, to help as well. Um, don't know if you're aware, but we put about a thousand tons of asphalt uh, on the fairground uh, lots each, each year. And uh, I, I hope you don't mind, but uh, within our budget this year, I did recommend uh, that we, we add $75,000 to improve the, um, uh, the, the restroom facilities out there because the reality is uh, the Sioux Empire Fair is a huge win to the city of Sioux Falls, a, a monster win in, in so many different ways, not only economic development, but also quality of life wins. And, and so again, this partnership that we've had at the WH Lion Fairgrounds uh, is one that, that I just uh, am thrilled by and uh, I certainly hope we, we keep it going for, for generations. Other facility partnerships. A, a rather unique one uh, that, that I don't know if everybody knows about is, is the Perry Nature Area, which is owned by the county and is on the east side of Sioux Falls. The property is certainly owned by the county, but the city, we develop and we maintain a part of that property as part of the Mary Jo Wagner Ar Arboretum. Um, and then, of course, uh, the, other, the other way that we partner is, we talked about this earlier, was the Multicultural Center. Now some program partnerships. Uh, public safety is, is just uh, the, the number one item uh, that, that all folks care about. Uh, because if our families don't feel safe, uh, there, is no, there is no quality of life. Thank you, Heather. 
um, uh, whether it be you know crime lab services that the city provides and we partner with the county, whether it be blood alcohol, substance and fingerprint testing, evidence storage and crime scene processing, uh, the sex offender registry, uh, and then again the county is there too providing things like background checks, blood draws for DWI arrests, and yes, a, a sobering center. We share costs with detox services, 911 dispatch services, the emergency operations center, and yes, the police were, uh, reserve emergency management as well. Health and human services. Um, again, medical and dental services are provided to both city and county folks. Uh, the homeless advisory board, homeless warming shelter, and I'll bet you didn't know, because I didn't know, that the city provides 40,000 ride tickets, free ride tickets to human service agencies within the county. Uh, and the, the county certainly helps coordinate uh, that, that distribution. Election support. Uh, elections don't happen in the city on their own. They certainly uh, they don't. And it's the county that uh, provides the, the bulk of the, of the help for that, uh, whether it be absentee voting or ballot tabulation on, on election day. Technology, public safety software uh, that is jointly funded by both parties. Uh, GIS, uh, which is becoming a more and more important uh, item as, as this city and county grows. And then, yes, CityLink, uh, broadcasting not only the city meetings, but also the, the county meetings as well. And then land use and, and zoning. Uh, we, we make these decisions together. Uh, one really doesn't make decisions without the other when it involves uh, uh, joint land uh, use decision making and, and that's, uh, that's really, really important. I, I think uh, the timing of this, uh, this uh, presentation probably couldn't be any, any better uh, after you just uh, finished your, your budget uh, discussions. You know, I, I think that the reality is, and, and you, you folks know it better than any, that uh, uh, we've got to find a way to, to do more with less. And uh, there is not a government entity that does more with less than Minnehaha County. There is not. Um, uh, we certainly we can't rely in the city, we can't rely in the county on the federal government dollars anymore. We also can't rely in the city and we can't rely in the county on, on state government dollars anymore. We're going to have to find ways to become more efficient, more productive with these limited taxpayer dollars that, that, that we're that we're blessed with. Um, the, uh, we, we certainly do a lot to, together today, and we've been doing this uh, for a long, long time. But I truly do believe uh, that these discussions that we're having amongst the city and the county, uh, we're going to have to think outside of the box uh, and, and really do even more in collaboration uh, if we are going to meet the, the service needs uh, of not only the city, uh, but also this county. And uh, I am also here to, to let you folks know, um, I, I know that we're within America's next boom town called Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I also know that it impacts Minnehaha County uh, in, in more ways than, than you can imagine. Uh, you have my support. Uh, I know you've got the city councilor's support as well as the 1,200 city employees that work in city government. You have their support as well. Uh, as we think of uh, unique ways to, to partner in, in, in the future. Uh, again, with that in mind, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the, the presentation that, uh, that Heather handed to you, uh, if you're ever interested, you'll find that there's probably double or triple the other ways that we partner. Uh, but again, uh, I didn't want to spend more than a couple minutes today uh, talking with you. So on behalf of the people, thank you so much for your service. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, that was not my intention, but if you do, that, that's fine, too. Uh, I respect uh, 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 Chairperson. Uh, it's up to you. Okay. Are there questions for Mayor Huther or comments? Madam Chair. Commissioner Barth. Thank you, Mayor, for uh, yeah. coming and seeing us. Uh, again, I've been here nine years, and I don't think a mayor has visited us before. Um, you know, I think a couple things. Your comment about the growth of our community going forward, uh, I'm absolutely in agreement with you. It is a little bit difficult when we see, you know, your budget going up by virtually the same amount of 
just going up the same amount as our actual budget. And, you know, at 64 million with us having a budget of uh, near 80 million, I mean, but I, I agree with you that we are looking at a boom town, and I, I, I hope we can find a way to keep up with you. The, the fact is that our revenues are growing at, uh, you know, 30 percent of the revenues of the city and the state, and, and yet our responsibilities are increasing at an even greater level. And uh, I think, you know, as we look at uh, getting a, a workforce for our community going forward, you know, it's nice to have parks and all this, but we need, we need good jobs and we need, you know, this crime issue, I think, is a detriment, a discouraging thing to uh, people thinking about moving here. And we need to uh, do a better job of solving that. I don't have anything I want to pitch at you right now, but uh, as a county commissioner, I think we're going to have to uh, step up to keep up with uh, the growth of our community. My fellows have heard me say this before. Chicago, 1870, uh, 100,000 people. 1970, three and a half million. And, uh, you know, we need, uh, we need bigger facilities all, all the way down the line. And uh, there's much more I could say to you, but uh, uh, we, we have to... Uh, uh, let me ask one question. You know, some of these things that we listed here have been ongoing for decades. What do you see going forward that would be something new that we could cooperate on? Well, first of all, if, if you wouldn't mind, and I will answer your, your last question, you know, I think Commission Chair uh, Heiberger I hit it right on the head. Uh, we can no longer put our heads in the sand anymore in the state of South Dakota. Um, we talk about uh, county funding. Uh, it, it needs to change. We need to do something different. We can't just rely on, on um, um, property taxes to fund county governments anymore, uh, especially in a boom town or a boom town county like Minnehaha County. Uh, so you certainly have my support uh, uh, in, in terms of evaluating that and, and lobbying uh, for that. Um, uh, Commissioner Barth, I am going to respectfully disagree with you on, on one comment. And, and uh, uh, one thing about um, uh, this boom town is that it's incredibly safe. Uh, I will match our record of safety against any uh, in, in this great country uh, that we call the United States. Um, certainly not everybody that moves into this boom town is a good neighbor. Uh, but but here's, here's the fact of the reality. Uh, if you do a crime in this city, we are going to bust you. We are going to find you. The challenge that the county has is that they then have to help us process that, uh, that, that person who committed the crime and then, yes, uh, house them as well uh, or lock them up. Uh, that is the reality. Um, we're not going to arrest fewer people uh, or be more diligent in that effort uh, just because the, the county is struggling. Uh, and I don't think that's your intent either, Commissioner Barth, at, at all. Um, so, again, we've got to find additional revenue sources, uh, and uh, we'll help you with that. Uh, there has been some out-of-the-box thinking uh, in terms of, you know, finding those, uh, those funding sources. Um, some of those I, I certainly uh, concur with as, as well. Um, in, in terms of uh, how we're going to have to collaborate in the future together, um, I'm, I'm a business person. I am. And so, for me, uh, we have to look at all those ways that maybe we are potentially even duplicating services today. And uh, if we can find a way to eliminate those, uh, I, I think that's a good thing. And I think that's what all of um, all taxpayers in, in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota and in Minnehaha County want us, want us to do. Now, uh, it's going to be tough uh, because we each have our own little silos, too. And, uh, but I think that these discussions that, uh, you know, the council is, is having with the commission, uh, that'll help break down those silos. Conversations like this, uh, where the mayor of Sioux Falls comes in and talks to the county about collaborating, thinking outside of the box, doing things different, um, uh, encouraging folks to get their head out of the sand. Uh, those are things that also will, uh, will help us in, in, the, in that effort. And I said us. I didn't say you. I said us. 
and I think that's uh, that's what we'll continue to, to do. It's going to be hard. Uh, it's going to be controversial, but I think that those are some of the things that, uh, that we'll have to continue to, to work on. Uh, I'm here for two and a half more years and, and would be happy to, to help in that effort uh, as well. You know, we, we talked about even the, uh, uh, the new city building that we have proposed uh, and how we can uh, partner with the county to utilize that space uh, to create maybe this, uh, this metro government area. Uh, and again, those are some of those things that as we grow, not only in the city and the county, we'll, we'll have to continue to, to tackle. Um, Commissioner Chair Heiberger, again, thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Uh, but I will open it up for other questions if there are. Commissioner Kelly. Um, Mayor, I want to thank you for coming today. I think uh, we appreciate this conversation going on. Um, as you know, the funds for our, our funds basically are property tax. Yes. Uh, and, and we rely heavily on that. Uh, at your signing yesterday, which I congratulate you on, because it's been a long struggle, um, you talked about $100 million in, in uh, potential growth over the next few years in that area. Uh, another one that's been announced recently and, and you're working actively in is the Foundation Park north of town. Uh, the only way we really share is if yeah, if these go into TIFs, we have, you know, we 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 don't share in it, and you get an immediate impact one with with sales tax dollars, but you also get the impact of uh, put down the road uh, of the uh, 15 or whatever it is, 15, 18 percent of the property tax dollars. I would just ask that you be very judicious. I realize there are times, uh, there are issues where. You have to use the TIF because there's some unknowns in there. Uh, uh, that I don't have to struggle with, but I do when when we're looking at because we don't see anything for generally 20 years uh, when that property tax growth comes, and yet our expenses continue to rise and rise and rise. So I just ask that and you know you continue to be very very selective in what you're doing with the TIF programs. I I believe in TIFs, but at the right place in the right time. Uh, generally, I think you know it, it, they plug it into their whole uh, forecast on, on their development, and that really shouldn't be. It should be at the end of the development when they project everything. They're short here, and it won't work without it. And uh, so I, I applaud that in the past you have looked at them pretty carefully. I hope you will continue to look at them very, very carefully. Commissioner Kelly, thank you. Um, to be fair to to your comment. Uh, we've never utilized TIF as much as we have since I've been your mayor. Uh, in fact, we've doubled the number of TIFs in just five and, in five and a half years uh, from all the TIFs that we've done prior to Sioux Falls history. Um, so, yeah, you, you should demand um, um, that, we, that we scrutinize these TIFs, and, and I will assure you that, that we are. Um, and it's interesting, uh, sometimes the more that we scrutinize these, uh, the more that we, you know, challenge and do our due diligence, uh, the more scrutiny that we also get uh, out there and among some within within, within the public. Um, I, that um, uh, one of the things that we've we've done uh, in the spirit of trying to let people know that we're not just giving these things away is now we're actually coming to the county as well. Uh, Darren Smith, Brent O'Neill, we're talking to you folks about these tiffs before we just spring them out there. And I think that's, again, uh, another important uh, aspect of, of this, collaborative, this collaborative effort. Because it gives not only an opportunity for the city to, uh, to scrutinize them or ask questions, it gives the county commission the opportunity to ask questions and to scrutinize them as well. And so, yes, uh, Commissioner Kelly, you certainly have my word uh, as well as the work of uh, the city team uh, that, that we will continue to scrutinize these. And one other thing, uh, the counselors do too. Uh, you know, we certainly, it is really one of the only tools that we have in city government uh, to kind of stimulate development. And though these, that is the, that those are these TIFs. Uh, but we certainly want to use that, that tool selectively. So, Commissioner Kelly, thank you. If I may. Commissioner Kelly. Um, I'd also hope maybe you'd consider, I know there's a group that kind of does the initial uh, look at these TIFs, because I imagine your requests are extremely higher than, <laughs> than what you grant, but uh, it would be nice if we had a county representative of some sort on that, on that group so that early on, because 
you know, oftentimes by the time it gets to us, and this is not a criticism, but by the time it gets to us, it's kind of almost a done deal. And, and we look like the bad guys on the development yeah. side. Whether it's in the city or in the county, it's, it's extremely important to us. And, and if we have a seat at the table early on, I think it would be uh, productive. Commissioner Kelly, thank you. I'll talk to Darren and Brent about that uh, uh, today. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Madam Chair. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Gerald has not spoken. Um, again, thank you for being here. My and pleasure. Frankly, thank you for uh, your efforts in making that uh, rail yard happen because I can remember way back when when we got the uh, grant and I was kind of involved in that. But uh, it's amazing to me it takes this long for the railroad to move forward and the governments to move forward to make this thing work. But I'm using that analogy only from the standpoint that I think that, frankly, if if we were to look at government in today's environment and say to ourselves, is this the way we would do business 20 years from now? Most of us would say no. And I really think that, you know, we have to start with that premise is to start conversations and, frankly, education of who's responsible for what. Because it's amazing to me when I was a city Commissioner, I paid little attention, frankly, to what was going on in the county. And now that we're into it knee high or higher, uh, you pay obviously more attention to both sides of the process. And I, I'm, what I'm suggesting is that maybe we ought to start talking about some joint discussion with some outside independent processes and educations to be able to look at this at a different viewpoint than just internally. And um, I think if that happens, we may come up with different forms of the way we do business. Uh, Commissioner Benega, uh, first of all, I commend you for your, your comments. Um, I have taken scrutiny uh, over the last five and a half years and then even a year when I was running for mayor, uh, when, I've, oh, when I've said the following, you know, we need to uh, run government more and more like a business, mm -hmm. uh, and and we do, mm -hmm. we do, uh, because we are getting we, we are having to, to to do more with with less, uh, and and uh, again I'll, I'll reiterate it uh, I don't think there's another county in in the state uh, that that does more with less than, than Minnehaha County, um, but you're but you're right uh, if you will I mean we've got 66 county governments in the state of South Dakota. Uh, we've got uh, uh, all these services that we're providing within Minnehaha County and the city of Sioux Falls that, that we really need to scrutinize to figure out is, is there a better way. Um, but what I would caution you on is that we're going to have to be tenacious in, in our efforts just like we were with the, uh, with the rail yard. Uh, it's going to have to be tenacious and you're going to have to deal with the scrutiny that's going to come uh, as you start to peel away the, uh, the, 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 the silo. Uh, and so, again, you have my commitment to Commissioner Benega that, uh, you know, I'd be happy to help uh, tackle that. Uh, Commissioner Benega, I, I know you personally uh, would be willing to, to tackle that. Uh, and, and I just think it's one of those things that we're going to have to do. Uh, we are. Um, you know, I, I'm hopeful that, uh, the, that there is going to be some, some progress made in terms of the funding. Um, but uh, I'm also a realist. I've been talking about this for a long, long time, and uh, something needs to be done. Uh, I hope that maybe this is the year uh, that, that, that that will happen. Uh, but you're going to have to keep fighting, and you're going to have to keep, uh, keep digging, and uh, you're going to have to stay tenacious. Okay. Commissioner Barth, do you have any comment? I, I just want to follow on about our little crime issue. And let me say that we are a very safe city. Thank you, Commissioner. The, just like with Apple Computer, to have them do a 5% increase in sales, you know, uh, Jeff and Mike's uh, lemonade stand, it's a lot easier to get an increase in sales. Uh, so the perception from people that see that in the last uh, five years we've had a 37.7 percent increase in violent crime it, it's it's a little scary but it doesn't mean that it's you know going on on every street corner then there's the perception that we and this body is partially responsible for where we're contemplating building a much larger jail yeah uh, you know our a larger community does need a larger jail but somehow as we have people moving in we can't allow the Sioux Falls nice thing to be lost by an influx of other people. We need more 
uh, good jobs like the Eros Data Center and stuff, and we need to uh, find ways to deal with mental health, uh, drug and alcohol addiction, and uh, that's, a, that's a joint issue for all of us, uh, whether it's religious, law enforcement, government, uh, or just being somebody's friend. But the perception is, is, is difficult, and it's going to discourage people from coming here unless we solve it. We, uh, we just talked about this the, the other day. Um, it, it, is, it is truly amazing uh, how often we work with mental illness challenges uh, right now within, within city government, and, and I know you're dealing with it in, in county government. Uh, Carol shakes her, shakes her head. <laughs> um, I, you know, the reality is, uh, is that we're not going to find a, you know, a cure for alcoholism. We're not going to find a cure for drug abuse. We're not going to find you know, a, a, a cure for all the mental illness challenges that are out there. Um, and because of that, uh, you are going to have the bulk of these violent crimes uh, happen because one of those three things are, are involved. Uh, that's the reality. And um, uh, I, I don't have a good answer for you today, Commissioner Barth. Uh, my mom uh, was the head nurse at the uh, Human Services Center for over 30 years. Uh, so I know the challenges of uh, uh, mental, mental illness. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic for most of his life. Uh, I know the challenges of alcoholism. Um, uh, I also know that drug abuse uh, is, is one of the biggest reasons why we have you know, a, a robbery at a quick stop, or we have someone, uh, you know, busting uh, into a uh, into a casino and and wanting wanting this or that. Uh, I don't have a good answer for you today, Commissioner Barth, uh, but the reality is reality, and that is uh, uh, we're we're going to have to deal as this city grows, as this county grows. You are going to need to build those bigger jails uh, to house the most violent offenders that the city of Sioux Falls will catch. We're going to catch them. You do the crime in this town, we're going to catch you. And we do. I like our record, Commissioner Barth. Um, the challenge is that, again, you have to house them when we do catch them. And we're going to. Additional comments? No, my turn. <laughs> yes. I just want to say, you know, thank you for coming and thank for... For educating, I don't think so much the commission because I think most of us are well aware of what type of partnerships because we're constantly looking for somewhere else to how can we make this work better. Example being that we, with the city council and um, Lincoln County, we have been working together over the last year and um, to come up with efficiencies in different departments. I actually sat with Jeff Barth on the planning and zoning once and we did come up with more efficiencies with planning and zoning. We looked at equalization and we looked at the Register of Deeds office and um, met. I believe monthly, Jeff, um, and came up with some significant changes on how counties and cities can work together and, like I said, included Lincoln County. It is a conversation that needs to go forward. I think it's wonderful. You brought us a great presentation, not necessarily so much for our education, but for the public's education. We have the media here, which hopefully will broadcast parts of it to show that we are honestly working together to try to keep property taxes down as much as possible by working with our partners, and we look forward to having more financially plus for us by working together with with um, the city of Sioux Falls and M Lincoln County. Commissioner Chair Heiberger, thank you. Uh, I, I guess sadly, uh, you know, I've been in this role for five and a half years. My, my initial intent was to really take city government and make it more efficient, more productive, more service oriented and responsive. And I just love how far we've come with that, with that effort. I'm so proud of, of our team. But I've got two and a half years to go, and so that is why I'm, I wanted to have this, this conversation in terms of, all right, uh, now what can we do in collaboration with the county uh, to, to really make things even more efficient for the taxpayers right here and within our county uh, and, and our city? And, and so this dialogue today is, is a good one. Uh, and, and to be brutally fair, the council, uh, they've been working on this with the county commission as well. So I think that shows it's a, it's a team effort, and we're going to tackle this beast. Yep. That's exactly right. There have been city councilors and commissioners sitting on all of these boards. So if there is nothing else, I will thank you again for your time. Thank Thanks you very for much for your time. Really appreciate it. Make it a great day. All thank right. you. Bye.
Um, item number 12 is consider a motion to approve the amendment of contract with D, oh, excuse me, HDR Engineering for Design Services on structure number 50-192-040 to include design services on structure number 50-241-080 at the additional cost of $71,546.65. DJ Boothy, good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent. In February, uh, we were approved to go forward with a contract with HDR Engineering to start the design and uh, plan preparation for a low slump overlay project uh, for a structure on County Highway 110. Uh, shortly after starting that design, uh, we found out that the uh, west abutment had some se severe structural issues and were advised to correct those along with this project, uh, which we thought was a good idea. Uh, the problem with that was that it would delay the construction for a year, and so we decided to take a closer look at this. And we also had a design uh, budget or a project budgeted for a low slump overlay in 2016. And so when we uh, started putting numbers together for the amendment to the agreement to do the structural design on the 110 bridge, uh, we thought that it would be really good to bid these uh, together with two lump, low slump overlay projects and the structural repairs in one contract. And so uh, the result of that is an amendment that not only includes the structural repairs, but also the low slump overlay on the structure on County Highway 118, which is right next to Eros Road or Eros uh, uh, facility. So uh, before you today is the request for an amendment to the agreement uh, with HDR Engineering uh, for the low slump overlay of 118 and the structural repairs to the abutment on 110. Uh, it's a big amendment, relatively speaking, because the contract went from $29,885 up to uh, just over $101,000. Um, so uh, it's a big change in that dollar amount, but as I've described it, I think it's well warranted. <coughs> it makes sense uh, the way that we're doing this. So if you have any questions, I can answer them. Otherwise, uh, ask for your approval for this amendment. Any questions? Commissioner Barth? So this bridge is on the, the Big Sioux River, right? The one on uh, County Highway 110 is correct. Are we? What all are we doing on that bridge? I mean, is that we we had originally agreed or um, set up an, a, an agreement to do a low slump overlay, which is basically resurfacing okay. the deck. And then when we were looking at uh, the bridge and when it was inspected with this year's uh, bridge inspections, uh, we found out that the west abutment, uh, the piling that went down uh, to support that abutment was failing and so that abutment was actually rotated uh, quite significantly and uh, and it needs to be repaired for the long term uh, life of that structure to really pay off for doing a low sump overlay con uh, project and so uh, we would like to do both of the uh, abutment structural repairs and the low slump overlay at the same time. Okay. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the amendment to the contract. All those in favor. Oh, excuse me, Commissioner Benega. Just uh, for my education, it seems like, uh, you know, the $71,000 increase in engineering fees is about 25% of what we're expecting the cost to be. What typically is the percentage of engineering <coughs> fees versus what a total cost of a project is? Uh, a professional engineer will say well, we don't like to look at those percentages, but realistically, we do look at those percent or percentages just as a rule of thumb. Um, for a, a relatively simple road design project, you might be looking at eight to ten percent uh, of the construction cost to do a design. Uh, for a, a simple structure design, you might be looking at maybe fifteen percent. Uh, for a more detailed uh, rehabilitation structural design, it's. It's any number. It could be 100%. And so uh, this is where we fall. We look really close at the hours they put towards uh, the design, and then their billable hours are, are multiplied by their billing rates. Uh, HDR is a very well-qualified structural team, and so their um, billable hours are, are good. Their billable rates might be a little bit higher than uh, some other companies, but that's because we're paying for a really qualified structural engineer to work on the contract. So we are comfortable with, with the high percentage of, of a fee to construction <coughs> estimate, uh, acknowledging that this is not a normal structural design. Okay. 
I have a motion and a second to approve the amendment um, to the contract with HDR. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number 13 is consider a motion to approve a change order number one in the amount of $10,417.05 to the contract with Zacharias Construction for project number MC14-17 repairs to 13 FEMA reimbursable site damage during the June 2014 flooding. Commissioners, in accordance with our purchasing policy, uh, we are to come to you before we close out a construction project uh, for a final change order, and that uh, change order just uh, matches the actual field quantities with a new contract unit. And so uh, we use a little bit more quantities than we had originally estimated in this uh, contract uh, to the tune of just over $10,000. Most of that came from some additional asphalt on one of the sites and then extra controlled density fill on multiple sites. Uh, both of those items are are somewhat difficult to estimate when you're when you're doing a rehab project and so um, uh, here it is for your approval and uh, we need this uh, to go through before we process the final pay application okay any questions for DJ on this one look for a motion so move second and a motion a second to approve change order one in the amount of ten thousand four hundred seventeen dollars and five cents all those in favor say aye, aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, DJ. Thank you. Item number 14 is consider authorization for the JDC to submit a grant application to the Sioux Falls Area Community Foundation for spot, for spot grant in the amount of $1,250 for, for disproportionate minority conference. Oops, I can't. DMC, Disproportionate <laughs> Minority Contact Conference. Excuse me, Melissa Buffalo and Jamie Gravitt. Thank you. Good morning. Um, we're here today just to request your permission to apply for that spot grant. This will be our second annual uh, conference that we're putting together. Uh, it enables us to uh, train service providers throughout the community and, and uh, probation officers, uh, all kinds of people that are going to be working with minority youth to reduce our numbers of minority in the system throughout from arrest to disposition. Uh, today in the detention center, 80% of our population is minority. Um, so we're really trying to come up with solutions as a community and, and pull people in and give them training to, to help uh, better serve the population. Uh, Melissa's here to answer any questions that you might have regarding the grant that we're applying for or the conference itself if you have questions for her. There are questions for Melissa regarding this conference. I attended, um, I believe, one session last year of the conference. It was very, very well attended. Um, I heard a lot of positive comments coming out of it afterwards, and I'm sure Melissa could, too, um, tell you she's done great work with the conference. Did you want to just kick a quick overview of what you're going to be speaking or what you're going to have speakers or yeah, uh, the um, conference? You have to speak in the microphone, oh, Melissa. Sorry. Um, we're going to do an opening, and we want a youth drum group from the community. Um, the Sioux Falls School District has the Native American coordinators that one of the staff had, works with the youth in the community, so they do a drum group, so I thought if we could open with that, um, as well as a prayer, and then having two sessions, it'll just be a half-day session, so really getting people there and focusing it on Native American Day, which is in October. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Any other questions, comments? Is there a motion? So move. Second. We have a motion and a second to authorize the submitting of a grant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Item number 15 is a commit, consider a motion to approve the following actions related to the disposition of tax deeds properties. Rich Litt, do you want me to read them all? Um, for the record right now, or do we want to just do one by one? Can we just do... Okay. Good morning, Commission. Rich Leitz, Deputy Auditor. Here before you this morning to get co uh, Commission action on our upcoming tax deed auction. And I would request six different requests. The first one being accept the findings of the appraisal board report. You all have copies of them. The second would be to declare property record IDs 24029, 29128, 30114, 48648, 20846, and 53766 as surplus for sale at public auction and approved minimum bids. 
for each of these properties. Thirdly, approve the minimum bid for county-owned property record IDs 14086 and 14088. These two properties are currently in Corson. Uh, fourthly, declare record ID 84040 as surplus for transfer to the City of Sioux Falls. It's a drainage ditch. And approve resolution authorizing the County Treasurer to issue a quick claim deed and authorize the County Auditor to abate all outstanding taxes, interests, and penalties against this property. Fifth, it would be to authorize the County Auditor to proceed with negotiations for transfer of record ID 84476 to the adjacent property owner as recommended by the appraisal board. And lastly, authorize the county auditor to publish a notice of tax deed auction on September 26, 2015 at 10 a.m. Are there any questions for Rich on this? Those are all separate Benega. motions we're going to need. Yeah, they will be. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Benega. I just have a question about the... Uh, I think they're the drainage ditches that have a zero assessed value, but we're asking for a minimum bid. Who's going to buy a drainage ditch? Well, Commissioner, that's just it. The City of Sioux Falls usually requests ownership of all these drainage properties because they end up handling them anyway. And so we I know in the past we have had several I think almost every auction in the past 10 years has had one or two drainage items each year on it, and so the city wants to acquire those so they can best deal with it. So do we get the minimum bid? No. No. <laughs> we get the minimum bid of, of zero on I mean, transferring ownership yeah. to the city. Commissioner Barth. Uh, Commissioner uh, Benega, you bring up an excellent point, and that's one of the reasons why <clears throat> I'm reluctant to create uh, uh, lots in rural subdivisions where it's clearly going to be a drainage thing that we're going to wind up seizing through non-payment of taxes. You know, that, that property should be attached to one of the lots adjacent, even if they just uh, let the, the grass grow tall there. But, uh, you know, we wind up uh, seizing that property and then donating it to the city or else owning it ourselves for no good reason. And uh, I can think of one on Bonson Avenue where they've got a boulder twice the size of that uh, podium that gives the name of the subdivision and it's sitting on a drainage lot now owned by the city. Uh, anyway, I just, uh, when I see us doing these subdivisions, say at Renner Corner or whatever, I hate to see us have a, a vacant lot in the middle that's going to be owned by nobody. <clears throat> Additional comments? All right, I thought we'll go through these one at a time. I'll read them again and I'll look for a motion in a second. That item number A is accept the findings of the appraisal board report. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number B is declare tax deed property RDI number 24029 2918301140864820846 and 53766 as surplus for sale at public action and minim approve a minimum bid amount for those properties. Is there a motion? So, so moved. Motion and a second. <laughs> Who's a second? I'm looking for a second. I'll second. <laughs> second by Dick Kelly. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number C is approve the minimum bid for county owned property ID number 14086 and 14088. Is there a motion? There is. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number D is declare record ID number 84040 as transfer as surplus for transfer to the city of Sioux Falls as drainage and approve the resolution authorizing the county treasurer to issue a quick claim deed and authorize the county auditor to abate all outstanding taxes, interest penalties against said property. I'll make that motion. Is there second. a second? Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number E is authorize the county auditor to proceed with negotiations for the transfer of RDID number 84476 to the adjacent property owners as recommended by the appraisal board. 
Second. So moved. Motion second. and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Authorize the county auditor to publish notice of the tax deed sale on September 26, 2015 at 10 a.m. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Madam Chair. Commissioner Berth. Thank you for reading them so well. Uh, <laughs> do we send a thank you note to the appraisal board on this or has anything happened with that? They did a... It's a tough job to go out and look at all these desperate locations. It is. It, it is. I, I'm not certain whether in the past we have. We certainly can. They, they, they do not get any remuneration with the exception of uh, a lunch. Right. So it's very low pay. Everything at the county is low pay, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll do it free, we like you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Rich. Thank um, you. Item number 16 is consider the following actions regarding disposal of a surplus property for Minnehaha County. Mary Zeeb, and she has a list for us, too. So. I do. Good morning, Commissioners. Mary Zeeb from the Auditor's Office. Um, each year we have an annual, uh, we participate in the annual surplus auction that's uh, set up and run by the City of Sioux Falls. I put in uh, my briefing memos, I think it's paragraph 2, a little bit about what has happened up to this point, but I would answer any questions for you new people if you had any. Um, otherwise, I would ask for you to, um, I, I think I could read through the items that require your action, and then I'd like to go back and revisit Exhibit B because it's a little different this year. That's the one regarding su okay. uh, surplus to um, nonprofits. Okay. So first we have, um, we ask that you would take action to approve uh, a motion to authorize the auditor to publish the notice of sale of the um, surplus property sale that's held September 26th this year in conjunction with the City of Sioux Falls. Item B is a motion to declare property on Exhibit A as surplus for disposition at the auction. That's just items to be sold at the auction. Um, C is a motion to to declare property on Exhibit B as surplus for purposes of donation to outside agencies. And uh, D is a motion to declare property on Exhibit C as surplus, surplus for donation as scrap. And if any of those items on that list look familiar because they come from the jail kitchen, they are not the same items that came before you two weeks ago brought by Mark from facilities. These are additional items that Mark is taking out of the jail and they'll be lumped together and then sold as surplus. But if I may speak to uh, Exhibit B, the items that are surplus for uh, nonprofits, is that okay? Yep. All right. Um, generally, this is not a very big list. We don't have very many um, offers. We send out a list to nonprofits that request a list of the items that are available. They go through it, and generally, they don't have many requests. However, this year, the list, I believe, is eight pages long. So, and it's a little different. There's a little different organizations involved this year. And your list is in, not in um, group order. So I'm going to read the um, nonprofits that have asked for donations this year. And I would like to remind you that if you decide to donate something to a nonprofit, it has to be a unanimous donation. And if you decide not to donate to the nonprofit, we need to have a declared surplus so it can be sold at the sale. Okay. So with that in mind, this year, the nonprofits requesting donations are the Colton Fire Department, Compass Center, Garrison Ambulance, PCs for, for People, the Retreat at Pointers Ridge, Sioux Falls Diversity Council, Sioux Falls Geological Society, and St. Francis House. Um, most of those I'm sure you recognize as being local organizations. The one that probably sticks out as being something unfamiliar to, to you is PCs for People. Included with your briefing information should be a uh, cover letter from PCs for People. They are out of St. Paul, Minnesota. I don't know how they got our name, but they called um, requesting information if we had any surplus computers that they would be that we would be willing to give them. They are coming to Sioux Falls, I believe, it's September 24th this year, working with Midco, and they plan to refurbish. 250 computers, turn them back over to people of need in the city of Sioux Falls. So if we donate items to PCs for People, the items will be refurbished by them at no cost and returned to people of need. 
and I have gone to their website. It looks like a very legitimate organization. They are a nonprofit, 5013C. They have worked in many cities in Minnesota. They're trying to branch out to Wisconsin, South Dakota, and North Dakota as well. So that is why the list is so very long this year, because they're asking for a lot of computers. And um, otherwise, the, our surplus sale is not a moneymaker for us. I think last year we probably made about $13,000. Most of that money comes from the sale of vehicles. This year I believe there are five vehicles requested for donation to nonprofits. So I don't know if you want to go by group, how, that's up to you. But we do need um, action to be these items declared surplus, how you want them surplus, and also action on the notice of sale. Okay. All right. You better stand by in case I do it wrong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Item number A is motion motion to authorize <coughs> auditor to publish notice of sale. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments on that one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number B is a motion to declare property on Exhibit A as surplus for dis d disposal at a public auction. Is there a motion on that so one? So moved. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Now the next one is the, could be the tricky one. Is This is the motion to declare, prop, oopsie, motion to declare property on Exhibit B as surplus for purposes of donations to outside agencies. Um, Mary read you the list of outside agencies there. You had the list of what they were asking <coughs> for. Are there any that you would like to pull out and look at individually? Do you want to do them all the same? Um, I mean, we can lump them into one if you're okay with everyone who's asked for surplus and they're okay with that. If you don't like that, we'll have to pull it out and then treat one specific one differently. And Cheryl, I'll make a motion to approve, but I do have questions <coughs> slash comment. I have a motion to approve all donations that are listed for the outside agencies. Is there a second? Second. A second. Commissioner Barth, there's the a question. The PCs for people, I'm, I'm interested in them. I just, we, we should make sure that they follow through correctly on, on that at mm -hmm. some point. And I will work um, regarding Commissioner Barr's comment. I will work with Trish from IT. I know she'll probably probably be interested to know as well which items they're going to be getting and make sure they pick them up. And I have a contact person. We can call them and talk to them when they're here in Sioux Falls working. The time couldn't be better. The timing of their coming to Sioux Falls couldn't work better for our surplus action. Commissioner Kelly. Well, I think that's a great idea. Did you happen to call any of the references, uh, any of the counties that they've already dealt with? And I did not. Um, I did, however, have them send you the um, little um, PCs for people letter, and yeah. they do give you a reference. I did not call that reference. If you want me to, I will. I think we should. I, I mean, I don't have a problem with this, but I think we should call at least one of the references. Or if you want Robert to do it, that, you know, that's fine. Carol and I talked about this before. Um, I even pursued it further, and she felt comfortable, so we did go ahead and bring it before you. Yes. Um, just to let you know, too, that the, when they are in Sioux Falls, it's actually sponsored by Mid Carol, Continent. Carol, talk into the mic. Please. It is actually is sponsored by Mid-Continent Communications when they come in in September. So we appreciated the fact that there was a local okay. organization working okay. with them. I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Okay, I have a motion and a second to declare property on Exhibit B as surplus for purposes of donations to outside agencies. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. And I think I remember last year that computers went for next to nothing. So They do go for next, next to nothing, and we don't even get a dollar a month for... We, there might be several on the list when it comes back from the city of Sioux Falls with no dollar amount attached, and then there'll be five dollars for one, and then there's a whole list yeah. of nothing. So we really do yeah. get nothing, nothing for them. For it is anyone. the vehicles that bring us the most money. Great. Okay, and item number D is a motion to declare property on Exhibit C as surplus for disposal as scrap. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion and a second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Item number 17 is Minneapolis County Liaison Reports. Are there any liaison reports? Madam Chair. Commissioner Barr. Just a quick item. Uh, you know, we had some uh, issues 
with the p potential sponsorship at the Sun Empire Fair, and I'm sort of happy to say that uh, Campbell Supply has stepped up uh, to make uh, a continuing donation to grandstand events of a significant amount. And uh, uh, anyway, I just want to make that comment. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner Barth, for bringing it to our attention. I did get a note on that also, and I will say Campbell Supply has done significant things at the fairgrounds over the years, and we greatly appreciate their support of that venue. Is there any new business? DJ Boothy has some new business for us. Hi, Commissioners. DJ Boothy, Highway Superintendent. I just wanted to give you a heads up. This is uh, hopefully just a coincidence of in uh, Mayor Huther's presentation earlier today, but. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I received an email from the city engineer's office um, asking if we would participate in a meeting next week with them uh, to coordinate some discussion about North Marion Road, which is the, I think it's called Foundation Park, uh, the Sioux Falls Development Foundation property up there. Um, they're looking at doing a preliminary grade line of Marion Road from the interstate up to County Highway 130, which is about two and a half miles. I've seen a few different exhibits uh, showing the proposed park, and they all have different boundaries along Marion Road, and so I'm not sure what exactly the boundary will end up being as far as where the annexation occurs. Uh, but it looks like approximately uh, 1.5 miles north of, of uh, Marion Road interchange will be where the annexation stops, and then there's something like a half to three quarters of a mile of Township Road that will be remaining until County Highway 130. And that uh, road currently is under the jurisdiction of Benton Township. And I can almost guarantee you that if the City of Sioux Falls builds a paved road um, up until the end of their jurisdictional limit, uh, that Benton Township will be throwing up their hands and, and here asking you for assistance and having the County Highway Department take over the remaining uh, half to three quarters of a mile. And so just trying to be on the front end of things, uh, I will be attending that meeting next week. Uh, any of you or uh, uh, Carol or anybody from the commission office is certainly invited to come to that meeting too. Uh, but this is just going to be, it sounds like, the first meeting and coordinating a preliminary grade line, uh, which will establish kind of some grading limits and, and what a road will actually look like when it's constructed. Uh, I know that the city has a preliminary schedule uh, put together for when they would like to do their construction. I think I heard that next year they would like to do some grading and then the following year after that do some paving. And so if that's the case, um, uh, I'll be briefing the commission uh, once I hear, I guess, a more updated schedule to see if there's any interest in the county being a partner in that, that whole project. Okay. But at this time, I just wanted to give you a heads up that the city did invite us to that meeting and uh, I'll be attending and, and finding out more information hopefully. Commissioner Kelly. Uh, that road, it's about a half mile from the runner road, right? Don't they go up about a half mile and then they're going to stop and so you got a half mile of gravel right, on, right. On, on the township road. That, I think that's the best estimate that I can come up with is a half, maybe even up to three quarters of a mile will remain township road. I, I think it's important that we at least get it into our plans. I, whether the city will annex further, I don't know. I mean, someday I suppose, yes. But uh, I think there's going to be a lot of traffic on that road because I think a lot of them will go north to, uh, depending on what gets built there, but they'll go north to the runner exit. And uh, to have a gravel road there would, I don't think, be would work very well. We may have put it into four or five years out, but somehow we're going to have to recognize, I think, that we need to do that. We'll have to start monitoring traffic on that road when things um, start to move down that way. So. And, and from what I heard from the city of Sioux Falls, initially they had looked at doing a more of an urban section uh, for their portion of the reconstruction. Uh, but the last I heard just a week and a half ago was that they're looking at doing a rural section, which is similar to what we did on La Mesa Avenue, uh, where they they have an existing gravel road. They might do some grading to take out some hills or some high points or low points, uh, but then they just grade, uh, uh, grade and, and pave two asphalt lanes. And so uh, it will be wide enough for the truck traffic that they see, but it's not going to be anything like you would see on an on a urban street where they have curb and gutter and, and a whole bunch of utilities. So 
if they only do that rural section, uh, for us to continue that north would be much less cost than uh, than the alternative. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Is there any old business? I would look for a motion to go into executive session session for personnel and potential litigation. So moved. Second. second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those same sign. Motion is passed as unanimously. We are adjourned. Yeah, I think so. I've seen it at some point. Yeah, let's see.